Video games and violence has been a tale as old as time. From the rising controversy of Doom's release to the apparent brainwashing of the Manhunt series, the media, or more specifically the news, controlled the worrying minds of parents in the 80s and 90s. Person, so you're doing the same actions that it would take two stabs somebody. So, and especially if kids just, you know, get to do that, especially at an early age, uh, I think that it probably would have, have an effect on them. Doom was no exception, its themes of hell and intense violence, for the time, certainly didn't help with its already poor reputation. But if you actually played the game, you would see that the worst of it was what was already plastered on the posters. But games like these weren't actually showing any genuinely tragic events, they were fictional, purely made to entertain people with its dark yet exaggerated tones. But what about the games that did, the ones that pictured, depicted and parodied tragic events? The internet gave people the ability to create whatever they wanted to whoever they wanted, and games were no exception. This mixed with the dark humour that everyone had, flash games that were less than PG became insanely popular. Newgrounds was essentially the breeding grounds for this culture. Millions of artists, developers, and more importantly, edgy people flocked to the site. This was no different for Pigpen, also known as Ryan Lambin, a young creative on Newgrounds who would see very little fame. That would be until April 16th, 2007. Around 7.15am on April 16th, 2007, Sung Hoi Cho, who was a student at Virginia Tech, killed two students. Within the next two and a half hours, Cho returned to his room to rearm himself. He mailed a package to NBC News that contained pictures, digital video files and documents. At approximately 9.45am, he then crossed the campus to Norris Hall, a classroom building on the campus where, in the span of nine minutes, Cho shot dozens of people killing 30 of them. Cho then turned the gun on himself. In total, he killed 32 people. Today, this is seen as one of the most devastating mass shootings to date, but while some were mourning over this loss, Pigpen took it as an opportunity. Just under a month later, he would create the game that would solidify his infamy on the internet. That game was VTet Rampage. The game itself is pretty basic. In the game, you go through the stages of what happened that day, with its humour being less than tasteful. Keep in mind this game was made almost a month after the shooting, with people still having it in their heads. This didn't matter to Lamborn, however, even boasting about the media coverage that had been made. I uh, originally made it just to uh, make some people angry, have a few laughs. What do you say to people who think that you've just made this game to get some attention? I'd say, yeah. I mean, of course you expect some attention from this. I mean, uh, you wouldn't make it if these sort of things never got any attention at all. The game also has its own original song, Kiki Key, 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 which details what Cho did that day. If the game wasn't already hated, the song most definitely added to it. On his website, he said that if he was paid $1,000, he would never make a joke again. This was obvious that he was trolling due to his previous comments on his page. He then removed the post, stating, the donation thing is there as a joke against all the people commanding me to take my game down. I didn't think anyone would donate money to it, and so far my PayPal account has proven me right. Comments on his website were mixed. On one hand, you had people saying how its crude humour and refusal to be silent showed courage. On the other hand, there were people calling it distasteful and immature. One big factor, however, was Newground's decision to keep it up. Newgrounds is known for its anti-censorship and freedom of expression. Unless it's illegal or goes against TOS, you can post it. And in relation to VTech Rampage, it was no different. The game to this day still remains up and you can play it. However, it now has been called the RIAA edition due to Lambon having to remove the song Shine by Collective Soul. It was originally added because it was one of Cho's favorite songs. The game as it stands has over 500,000 plays on Newgrounds, and has solidified itself as proof of Newgrounds anti-censorship rule, but this of course wasn't the first or the last of its kind, no. There's one game that had been made that had sparked way, way more controversy than this. Super Columbine RPG was created from the mind of Danny Ladon, someone who has spoken about the game's message and how it was more than just a joke. Let's see about that. The game itself is made on RPG Maker, which you most likely know for games such as Omori and Lisa the Painful, although you should probably know by now that this game is nothing like them. 
The game puts you through the eyes of the shooters, Eric and Dylan, as well as showing flashbacks to the events that aided them in what would soon to come. One thing that I think shouldn't be understated is its information and detail. Even for a game made about Columbine, it shows the harsh truth and reasonings for why Eric and Dylan did what they did. Many people assume this game to be a love letter or some form of praise to the shooters, but after playing the game, I genuinely believe that it does the opposite. Danny portrays Eric and Dylan as some sort of reserved homosexuals who are incredibly edgy badass. While you may think that it still isn't okay to joke about the subject as a whole, you can't deny that making fun of the people who committed the shooting is deserved. Going back to the game itself, the first portion of it follows the shooting and more flashbacks until the police arrive and, just like in real life, Dylan and Eric take their own lives. I should give a warning to those of you that decided maybe to play this that there is footage of the two suicides in the game. While badly pixelated, it's still not very nice to look at. This is where the game takes a massive turn in the other direction, however. Waking up as Dylan, you arrive in hell. N no, I'm not joking. The game ending with you killing Satan. Now, you may think that this will go down the same route as Pigpen, with a little bit of trolling, but this is where the similarities between the two differ. Where Lamborn saw comedy, Ladon saw an actual message. Danny has continuously fought for Columbine RPG's rights to be made. The game itself was at first attacked in the public and in the press, and then it was blamed for a school shooting in Montreal, and finally it was rejected from the list of finalists from a game competition. But along the way, it developed a lot of ardent supporters, and myself as the creator of the game, decided that it would make an interesting subject for a film to look at the future of games in digital culture. Surprisingly enough, some of the victims of the shooting themselves agreed. One of them stated, It probably sounds a bit odd for someone like me to say, but I appreciate the fact, at least to some degree, that something like this was made. The media, however, did not, calling it an example of a subculture that worships terrorists. This, of course, didn't deter people from actually playing the game, and personally, I think it brings a genuine message to the shooting if you look past the mounting of dark comedy and light-hearted way of sending that message. This is how Danny similarly felt after seeing Lamborn's game and its comebacks. Believe it or not, but the person who was giving Ryan advice was Danny, commenting on his website about the donation poll. This quote seems to indicate that Ryan has no intention of leaving the game up permanently or having a channel for its discourse as I have done, but instead has unfortunately chosen an artist statement that reads more like a hostage note. Following Ryan's demands, should anyone accept an apology made after a $3,000 collection check? I'm not sorry for making SCMRPG, nor should Ryan be sorry for making VTR. To imply that his apologies can be purchased for a few thousand dollars truly cheapens whatever efforts he is attempting to make. Ryan hit back with a snarky reply, telling him how it was all just a joke. Danny, the donation thing is there is a joke against all the people commending me to take my own game down, and I didn't think anyone would donate money to it, and so far my PayPal account has proven me right, but I could use some fucking money, thanks. And I'd appreciate if you didn't use the name Ryan, that is just for close friends and family. I can't help the people that gleaned personal information from my website, I would hope you would have the courtesy to not disrespect me in such a manner on my own website. Danny. This is where two of the most hated creators on the internet's argument ended, with Ryan continuing to make cartoons and other media but wouldn't really ever find the success that he once got with VTech. Or so you would think. The Sandy Hook shooting has been titled as one of the most widespread and infamous mass shootings to date, and just like any other, the topic of video games and anything not so PG came into discussion. New sources showing the perpetrator Adam Lanza's collection of media and violent games as a reason for the shooting. Ryan, who at this point hadn't done anything to garner any more attention to himself, saw an opportunity. The slaying of Sandy Hook was made by Ryan as a way to be put back into the eyes of the media, but instead of using it to his own benefit and to make a joke, he seemed to have had a reason for making the game. The only similarities between the slaying of Sandy Hook and VTech Rampage is that they're about school shootings. The slaying of Sandy Hook gives a morbid and genuinely real coverage of the events that day, and there's no denying that anyone who came to play the game was truly shocked by how serious it was, a stark contrast to VTech Rampage. Ryan made it very clear from the start that it was not supposed to be fun or enjoyable. There's a distinct lack of music and any other sounds are gruelling and make you feel uncomfortable. Unlike VTech Rampage's intended purpose of being fun and full of jokes, 
You don't feel good playing this game, until the near end of the game, all that plays are gunshots and slow walking of the character. One thing that's worth pointing out is the art style. Instead of having cartoony pixel art, the slaying of Sandy Hook has silhouettes and bright, disorienting backgrounds that make it hurt to look at anything other than the warping blobs of black. When shot, the characters spray neon pink blood. Even though this game is based off of and directly talks about the events of Sandy Hook, I feel like this was a choice effort to show that this wasn't the first or, unfortunately, the last shooting to happen and how replacing the black silhouettes with any other shooter today would work just as well. The game ends with you taking your own life after successfully killing 26 people, 20 of which are children. This is the real life amount of people that were killed in the Sandy Hook. After the game hit Newgrounds, the media were obviously not too happy, and seeing as this wasn't the first time that he had gone into the public side for this sort of thing, Ryan made sure to let everyone know what the game was really about, leaving a voice note in the game itself. Hi, I'm Ryan Jake Lamborn, creator of this game. Back in 2007, I created a game called uh, VTech Rampage about the Virginia Tech shootings. In the years since, I've been routinely asked by fans of VTech to make you know, more games of just about every mass shooting that's gotten media coverage. I'm someone who rarely follows the news, so these updates have been a constant reminder of just how commonplace mass shootings and school shootings have become. It seems like Ryan's pass back and forth with Danny might have had an effect with him. Even so, the media still wasn't changing its views, and yet again went to Newgrounds to try and get the game taken down. Well, you might be surprised to know that the owner of Newgrounds, Tom Fulp, had chosen to take the game down as well. He writes on a post about this saying, over the years, a number of highly offensive games and movies have been published on Newgrounds, and despite the hate mail and being dropped by just about every other ad company in existence, we held firm on a policy of anti-censorship. Today, however, I pulled a reversal on that policy, and maybe it was a huge mistake, or maybe it was the right thing to do. I'm sure there will be a variety of opinions on the matter. This may come as a shock to some, seeing as VTech Rampage had been allowed on their site, despite its intentions being more ignorant than the slaying of Sandy Hook but alas, it was taken down. You are still able to play the game, however, with it being put onto Game Jolt, which it hasn't been removed from, surprisingly. But as the game's knowledge slowly ceased to garner any more attraction, so did the media's coverage. With the infamy still following him, Ryan has gone on to make games that would see pretty notable fame, creating a social interaction simulator, which has been featured on big channels such as Game Grumps. He hasn't been as active online, however, last posting on his Twitter page in 2020. It seems as if Pegpen has gone on to make better things away from the internet. Danny's presence, however, has stayed on the internet, continuing not only to talk about Columbine RPG, but the wider political issues as a whole. It shouldn't be understated how much of an impact these games caused around the topic of freedom of expression and artistic intent. While I find VTech Rampage to be distasteful and not a very good way of spreading that message, I think it should stay up on the internet. And I think the same with Sandy Hook and Columbine RPG. Unfortunately, mass shootings and devastating events won't cease in the foreseeable future, and I think the internet and its ability to cultivate people with strong opinions and talent will do a greater good to create a discussion about anything they really want. I mean, that's what the internet is for, right? But other than that, I've been Spindling, and thanks for watching. Yo, let me tell you about this slut, Emily.